What's up guys? We're doing a quick little blood work update. It's been almost three months exactly since our last blood work. And I was having some sleeping issues for like three days straight, didn't sleep. I was experimenting with, you know, which mineral was the problem and I couldn't figure it out. So I said, look, let me get some blood work. Then I'll know what it's gonna be. Uh, so for anyone not up to date, our latest hurdle to overcome has been copper toxicity. The previous blood work updates showed some signs of improvement, but the numbers today are very significant, a drastic change, you know, kind of demonstrating that what we are doing is effective at fixing the problem. So all the supplements, everything I'm mentioning here, guys, we talked about it in past videos. We've gone over the protocol and I'll go over a little bit today, but everything is on organsupplements.com. Uh, now the sleep problem was magnesium being too low. So we had calcium and vitamin D deficiency last time. This time was magnesium, but I was like taking calcium and D3 because I thought that's what it was, but it wasn't. So my sleep wasn't getting better. And I guess that depleted my magnesium stores pretty bad. So, you know, sometimes the blood work really helps uh, figure out and pinpoint what it is because when you're taking like set amounts of these vitamins and minerals every day, you don't necessarily know how it's directly affecting the blood. So three months ago, our vitamin D was low, 17.5 on a scale of 30 to 100. Copper was a little high, 115 on a scale of 69 to 132. But the main issue, zinc being low, 65 on a scale of 44 to 115. Ferritin has been the same around nine because I'm still consistently donating blood every month. Uh, but if you guys are unfamiliar with ferritin, it's your liver iron stores. Uh, so that will remain low again because I'm taking blood out, which we'll talk about more in a bit. Now blood work from last week, vitamin D is up to 49, so we're back in a good range. Copper is down to 95, so it's nice to see you know, a pretty significant improvement. The serum copper dropped 20 points. And what's more substantial is that zinc went up to 87, whereas before we were supplementing zinc for six months straight without an increase in blood levels. So, you know, incorporating the vitamin D and magnesium and calcium into the protocol got that zinc right up. Uh, ferritin's the same at nine, you know, still giving blood consistently. Uh, calcium was actually higher on the high end and the serum magnesium was on the low end. So that told me that I need to get my magnesium up and that I can probably lay off the vitamin D and calcium for, for a while. Uh, Ceruloplasmin also lowered to 21.9 on a scale of 18 to 31, uh, but I didn't test Ceruloplasmin three months ago. Uh, last time I checked it was back in September of last year, six months ago, where it was 37.6. So that's a pretty drastic improvement, almost cut the Ceruloplasmin levels in half. And uh, we explained this last time, Ceruloplasmin is the copper carrying protein in the body. It's, it's the main way the body transports copper. Uh, you can also see back six months ago, the copper was 120 and the zinc was at 62. So uh, we're definitely on the right track. All the blood numbers are getting more to the mid normal range. Just have to be careful not to overdo any supplements and, and to be consistent with the protocol. Uh, so we were taking so much zinc and magnesium to fix the copper toxicity that I depleted the calcium and vitamin D to the point of deficiency. But you know, now I know that I'm drinking more Mountain Valley, higher calcium waters like Daryl Steiner, and that I took vitamin D, I'm getting some sun. Uh, that, that part of the puzzle has, has been solved. And depending on your blood work levels, you might not need to take vitamin D or calcium. A lot of people tend to be high on those. However, it's very likely you will have to take zinc, magnesium, and molybdenum in every single meal. And if I, and I've explained this before, but to touch on it briefly, zinc, you know, you're replenishing your zinc stores, the zinc deficiency that's caused by copper toxicity. Magnesium is required for transporting copper, 
very overlooked and necessary. That, that's a big element people are missing is they're not getting magnesium. And in order to get a lot of magnesium, again, you might have to also be taking calcium and vitamin D because those get depleted. And molybdenum is very good for removing copper and preventing its absorption. So taking these three with every meal has made a world of a difference and they need to be taken together. I literally do not sleep because if I don't take these, then uh, my serum copper goes up, my blood calcium goes up, and those minerals can cause excitation in the brain and make it difficult to sleep. Uh, so that's why we came up with the zinc complex, magnesium complex on organ supplements, uh, choosing the most effective and bioavailable chelations of those minerals, and more importantly, at the correct and safe dosage. Without the low safe dosage of those supplements we have, you couldn't do this protocol effectively with every meal and you wouldn't feel as good. Because uh, if you're trying to minimize copper absorption, but the only molybdenum supplement on Amazon is like 1000% of the RDA, you can't take that every meal because you're going to get molybdenum toxicity. And you need to have the mineral in the digestive tract in every meal to be more effective at taking copper out. If you just have a ton of molybdenum stores in the liver, that's not necessarily going to help the copper toxicity as much. Um, so uh, you might be able to find zinc, so other than, I mean, we have the most affordable and highest quality supplements on organsupplements.com without fillers and the correct dosages. Uh, but if you don't have access, if you're in another country or something, then uh, you can probably find magnesium and zinc that are okay dosages, but molybdenum, you're probably gonna have a very difficult time finding something that's safe to take every meal. Uh, so, the blood is a totally different story and probably warrants its own video, but uh, what I do is I, I take about a liter of, or whatever is normally donated, yeah, well, 500 mil of, so half a liter of blood out, maybe every three weeks. Now, blood is full of all the minerals. So when I take the blood out, it's taken out calcium, magnesium, zinc, copper, iron, it's taking out everything, which can be bad. But the idea is if you take the blood out, although you're removing all that stuff, you're also taking out copper. And then in your diet and supplement routine, you're not replenishing the copper. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword where you can accelerate the copper removal and feel better. However, you can also exacerbate certain deficiencies. So it, it's a tough call. Uh, you can do it based on how you feel. And honestly, I don't really feel that significantly better when I donate the blood and take the blood out, but I'm guessing that because I'm doing that is the reason I've been able to make significant changes and improvements in the, in the blood numbers in such a short period of time. Because otherwise the body can only remove so much copper you know, throughout the day, every day. So that, that, that's been, taking out the blood has been a consistent thing, but I'll say it again, that means you might have to take more calcium more magnesium, more zinc, you know, eat more steak, really get your nutrition in to make sure you're replenishing your body of those other nutrients contained in the blood. So it's, you know, it's kind of like, it's risky because you're, you're removing, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine potential nutrients that you need to feel good at the, the cost of removing one, the copper. So that's definitely, uh, that's definitely up in the air, but I feel like if you don't do that, and the ferritin and copper might not might not be removed as quickly. So, uh, I'm excited that we've seen demonstrable is that a word? Demonstrable progress over these past few months, and that means that if we continue to stick to this protocol, I, I think we're going to see even even more improvements in in the next few months and and based on what i've seen hey i think before the end of this year we might resolve the copper toxicity issue i, I think that's a very likely possibility and we should be feeling so much better uh, and i don't want this video to be too long but one last thing i'll touch on is the the way to be as healthy as possible is to take as much stress off the body and off the liver and that means to have less things in it you know um, a, a lighter car is going to drive faster, but if your car is missing a transmission, it's not going to drive at all. So you have to make sure 
to remove as much of the negatives from your body as possible. And it's also ideal to not have too much. You're better off being in the low range of vitamin D. You're better off being in everything low and balanced because if everything's as low as possible and balanced, that means you know your liver has basically free space and your body can function as much as possible and significantly the mineral levels in your body will be lower, which means less metals in the body, which means less uh, susception to EMF radiation, less oxidative stress. So the real goal here is how can we get all of our nutrients at the perfect level of just being sufficient enough. That's where you're gonna feel the best and have the most tolerance for, for anything. So that, I mean, that's where we've been trying to get for a few years now on this liver detox diet. But thank you guys for joining. Hopefully uh, this helps you guys out um, and, and give you some direction on, on what to do on your health journey. And also shows that I, you know, I exaggeratedly, I exaggeratingly, I sarcastically call myself the nutrition genius. However, I seem to be the only guy with half a brain enough to figure this out. So if you guys go to organsupplements.com, you'll see all those supplements. And in regards to this copper protocol, there, there's you know, a lot of videos you guys can check out. Just search Frank Tefano Copper Toxicity to get um, more of an explanation of everything we've been doing. But this is, this is a nice improvement in the right direction. So as always, guys, please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.